SCP-093 Yellow Test Mirror Test 4 Color Yellow D-Class subjects no longer authorized for testing Testing focus has been shifted to data collection after analyzing the articles brought back from the previous three tests to better understand the fate of the world accessed by SCP-093 and determine if safeguards or practices are required for our own world. Analysis of the brown fluid on the clothing of the lost escort team member <coughs> has been filed with the other recovered articles. Dr. B has volunteered for this test as out of the possible candidates, he was able to cause SCP-093 to undergo a new color change. There is no evidence in Dr. B's background of any illegal or criminal behavior, nor of any psychological problems. When presented to the mirror, the view changed to that of a cubicle office environment. For this test, Dr. B opted to use the wireless video system and forego the pulley return system, stating he was confident he would be safe as none of the torso creatures had been witnessed within a building where the mirror's destination showed. Video feed commences after Dr. B has crossed the mirror. As with prior tests, SCP-093's current color, yellow, tinges all video material. Camera flickers to life and pans across a series of plain white cubicle constructs. Approximately 30 are visible. At the far end from the point of entry is an office module built into the wall with frosted glass walls and a glass door. Dr. B approaches this door and investigates the etched writing on it. Senior Manager Stanley Millimits. The door is unlocked. Dr. B enters the office and examines the desk. A coffee cup is on the desk, a dark brown stain covering half of the inside as the liquid evaporated. There is a donut on a plate which Dr. B picks up and lobs at a wall. On impact, it thumps like a rock and falls. A file cabinet in the corner of the room draws Dr. B's attention and he goes through each shelf one at a time, stopping in the second drawer and taking out a file, then going back to the first and taking out two others. Continuing to the third and fourth drawers, he withdraws four additional files and spreads them all out on the desk. The files are blue filing folders and he points with his finger and camera at a symbol on each of praying hands, stating aloud for the camera that all other files are stored in yellow folders. The blue folders are placed in his field kit. Camera attention is turned to the PC on the desk that is logged in and functional. Dr. B comments aloud, wondering where these devices are getting their power from, as he has noticed no power outlets. This PC's desktop contains the logo of Faithful OS and even has sounds, clicks of the mouse followed by soft hymn-like hums and opening of icons followed by angelic bells. The PC fails to yield any useful information to Dr. B, who abandons it and leaves the office. Approaching the other end of the office floor, Dr. B presses a button on the wall for the elevator and enters, finding he is on the 34th floor of a building having an unusual number scheme. The keypad layout goes from negative 115 to 115, and includes all floors. Before pressing a floor button, Dr. B requests that the wireless video transponder be moved to the elevator and replaced with a construction cone to mark the entry point. A second transponder unit is placed outside the elevator and Control is instructed to recover the second unit and seal the test chamber should something happen to him. Then, when all is arranged, he presses the button for floor negative 115. The descent down the elevator is long, consuming 15 minutes. During this time, the camera experiences one malfunction where the image jerks and turns to snow restoring to show 14 other figures in the elevator with Dr. B as video pans around, all of whom move as he moves to allow him space. They remain for 35 seconds, then the camera flickers to snow and returns. Dr. B is now alone in the elevator dancing, as is assumed by the ducks and sways of the video feed. Dr. B pauses to comment on a rising stench coming from below. At this point, the elevator has reached floor negative 108. Dr. B presses negative 110 to interrupt the descent down and exits when that floor is reached. The elevator doors open to an enclosed observation deck with several PCs and chairs. 
All PCs appear to have power. The ceiling to this deck is also glass, and above it, another deck is visible. Dr. B approaches the monitoring station and checks one of the PC screens. On the screen is the faithful OS logo and a video feed toggling between four different views. The first view is a room of tubes, similar to those found in Test Violet, which number in the thousands. The second view is a closer up view of these tubes as a camera glides in front of each to monitor the contents. All tubes the camera passes by are broken. The third view is facing the opposite direction as a camera glides vertically checking each observation station. A total of 10 can be counted and Dr. B is visible as the camera passes by his own station. Looking up, a hovering camera unit with no visible means of propulsion glides up past him. The fourth view shows the ground floor below the observation deck where a single, astonishingly large torso being is crawling in circles, bumping into walls and changing directions. From the camera feed, the creature's estimated size is six stories. Returning attention to the contents of the PC, Dr. B moves the video log aside to see a simple text editor that was hidden behind it. A printout of this text was recovered and filed in the field kit. The printout directed Dr. B to a safe on floor 54 and provided a combination. Dr. B leaves the observation deck and proceeds to 54 without a vent, arriving on a cubicled office floor. He proceeds to the desk mentioned in the document and finds a safe hidden beneath a desk undisturbed. The combination provided opens the safe and reveals a notebook filed in the field kit and a peculiar revolver that has been returned as in addition to the 24 rounds of ammo found with it. Dr. B proceeds back to the elevator without a vent and returns to 34. Given the sheer number of floors available to explore and the vital information obtained from the observation deck, the test is considered over and equipment is retrieved. Before returning through the entry point, Dr. B investigates a terminal nearby that has power and finds it shows the exact same screen the one on negative 110 shows. It is theorized that the author of the note installed a network virus to propagate it through the building so any PC on that network would be found and the information discovered. Dr. B returns through the entry point and the mirror returns to a reflective surface. All materials filed with other SCP-093 recovered materials. Analysis of and the ammunition for it postponed for reason that it would require deconstruction of one of the rounds and they may be beneficial until testing of SCP-093 is resolved. Video ends. The next test is classified as the red test. SCP-093 Mirror Test 5. Color Red. SCP-093 distributed among staff until a new color could be generated by contact with it. Service technician was able to cause SCP-093 to take on a fierce red hue and glow, much brighter than the object's normal color. Agreed to assist with a test of SCP-093. Per Dr. B's request, given to technician Jackson for use in this test. When applied to the mirror for the test, SCP-093 generates an unknown environment. No color tinge appears present on the displayed destination, which is comprised of red stonework. Technician enters the mirror and video capture begins. Video flickers to life and Technician known hereafter as Subject, is viewing a large cylindrical pillar that is rotating on its own. Object is of unknown height and appears to be 1.8 meters in width. Holes are distributed throughout the object at seemingly random intervals. On occasion, a beam of white light is emitted from these holes. Turning of the camera finds that the beams are connected to a multitude of objects similar to SCP-093 that are part of the room's walls. The room turns out to also be cylindrical in shape, with countless copies of SCP-093. Subject turns back to entry point and finds it is a section of wall that is missing its copy of SCP-093, presumably the one carried with subject. Other sections of the wall on inspection are also found to be missing their copies, leading to speculation that this may be some sort of central array. 
Subject finds a ladder in the floor while examining the room and proceeds down it at Control's request. The ladder exits into a large clean room full of computer equipment that appears antiquated compared to previously encountered equipment. Large computers running on reel-to-reels are clicking and spinning at various locations. A light bulb of unknown meaning turns on for 10 seconds then turns off. A large CRT monitor is displaying single words in eight colors at roughly five second intervals. While observed, the words clean, unclean, clean, clean, lost, unclean, flash on the screen. Proceeding through the room, it ends in a large glass window as another observation deck. This deck looks out over another series of tubes as witnessed before, but far fewer and filled with a blue liquid. What appears to be electrical current dances over many of the tubes at erratic intervals. At least five tubes at first glance are empty and broken. At the observation window, a keyboard is present on a pedestal awaiting a selection to be made. The options available on the screen are tube status, which awaits for a numerical input, Reports, Situation X549, Situation X550, Evacuation Log, Bull Agent Report, and Facility Fire Plan. Video expunged. All selections that generated text were transcribed by subject and verified by a control member who passed through the portal to recover them. This process took approximately two hours and video feed was deleted to condense this report. Recorded documents are filed as video interrupted. Control lost contact with subject approximately 30 minutes after departure of Control Tech. Subject was asked to remain in area and observe the machinery and the containment room to make observations for debriefing. The SCP-093 mirror portal returned to a reflective surface prematurely and all video contact with subject was lost. Control was unable to re-establish due to SCP-093 being across the mirror. A time lapse of 1 minute and 48 seconds was recorded before mirror portal re-established itself and subject returned through portal. Subject appeared to be in good health and condition despite the time loss but spoke little. During immediate debriefing, subject underwent sudden convulsions and medical staff was alerted. While attempting to subdue subject, he displayed enhanced strength and used to shoot one of the debriefing staff, killing them. Guards shot subject once with a sidearm in the heart and once in the chest, but subject did not fall. All staff evacuated room and a second shot was fired by subject, which missed. A more heavily armed team entered debriefing room and used automatic weapons to dispatch subject. Reports confirm that subject did not bleed when shot but instead leaked a green-brown substance that seemed to be a mix of solution observed in some containment tubes and the material recovered during test 3. All further SCP-093 tests have been discontinued while review of materials recovered is in effect. A secondary tape recording device was found to have activated in the field kit after loss of video feed, and its contents have been filed with the other recovered materials. All recovered materials from SCP-093 testing are level 4 classification. Release must be approved by no fewer than two level 4 personnel. Staff with acceptable clearance, please sign in with Dr. Bart for access to the materials recovered from SCP-093 tests. SCP-093 Recovered Materials All documents contained in this file are class 4 clearance requiring two signed approvals to access. Any employee reading past this point who does not have proper classification should consider themselves to be terminated from employment and now subject to disciplinary actions up to and including forced administration of Class A amnestic, immediate transfer to Keter Class Security, and death. Blue Test Newspaper Article 1 only one item could be recovered during our initial test, and that was a newspaper clipping found attached to a cork board in an abandoned bunker. Most of the articles were in a state of decay, but one was firm enough for recovery. Most Holy Father announces progress, unclean being cleansed. 
A rare public address directly from the Most Holy Father of the United Lands of the Sun has declared that the Blessed Militia has driven back many of the unclean who are skulking our lands now. New Rome, our capital, has been purged of the unclean, and citizens are encouraged to come back to their homes. Citizens who live in the surrounding countryside should not return to their farms, as the unclean still roam the fields and plains around our glorious city and continue to grow in size. The Blessed Militia has developed new weapons which have proven capable of punishing the unclean and driving them back into the unfertile lands. Construction has begun of a system to permanently close the unfertile lands off from our blessed lands in each affected area once all the unclean have been driven away. The Most Holy requests that all citizens of our united lands bow in prayer and offer tithe to recognize the sacrifices of our blessed militia in these troubled times. Reports have been coming in that falsely accuse the Blessed Militia of having committed sin against the citizens whose homes they are inhabiting as they travel bravely through contaminated lands. The Most Holy would like to remind the people that blasphemy against any who wear his mark is the most grave of sin and unfounded accusations will be punished accordingly. We should work to support he and his men however possible just as they lay down their lives for us. The sinful rebels who... Green Test, Newspaper Articles 2, 3, 4, and Diary. Our second test recovered many materials that helped to establish a sequence of events for this alternate world. The diary recovered provided a glimpse into the last days of the owners of the home from which it was recovered and may represent activity in other areas of the world as well. Newspaper Article 2. Farms surrounding the City of Feathers have reported being unable to contact neighbors across voice or video feeds in the last week. Until an approval is granted by the Regional High Father, an investigation cannot commence, but he assures the people that these events have not escaped his attention. Residents are advised to notify their local Blessed Voice daily so any further disappearances can be addressed immediately. Residents are also advised to begin stocking their shelters to be ready for any situation. Newspaper Article 3 Following the disappearance of the blessed voices from several outlying regions around the city of Silver Feathers, the Regional High Father has declared a concern for safety and livelihood. Under this declaration, all farmland residents must evacuate immediately to their shelters. Scattered reports of an unclean have come in, but have yet to be verified. Newspaper Article 4 The City of Glorious Song has stopped responding to any and all communications. The worst can only be assumed and our hearts go out to any who are in the region who are unable to hear our words. The City of Silver Feathers Blessed Militia has reported several incursions by the unclean into the city and have exterminated four of the abominations before they could become a danger to any residents. The Regional High Father reminds the citizens to avoid direct confrontation with the unclean. Conventional arms do nothing to the unclean. Only the most holy of implements will penetrate their skin, so do not put yourself in danger. Any citizens who suspect their neighbors indulging in heavy sin should immediately contact the Blessed Militia through designated checkpoints. Diary <laughs> I have the distinct feeling we're going to die, so I'm going to write all this down for whoever comes along and finds our bones. My name is Herverf Jakulsev, and I'm a farmer. I grow the rab sticks and the huskiers. We raise the inks and the ooms. It's me, my wife Ophiri, and our two little uns, Trevin and Listeria. I got this book and trade from the blessed man who came by for food and shelter. He told us to start getting our shelter ready and not to let other blessed who come by even know we're here. Says the whole thing break down, nothing right no more. So I does as he said, got it all ready, we going down there the next day or so. In the morn, he was gone, which made the wife sad as he was polite to us unlike most of the others. Figure he didn't want to be no burden. Liz went out looking for him to be sure he weren't just around the house. He didn't turn up nowhere, so we guess he left. Strange enough, Lissa found his clothes around a mile or so away, and all his gear, but no him. She left it all there and that's for the best if what happened that I think. I'm clearly no educated man, don't claim to be, but I can put two and two together and tell you that things are bad out there. For everyone and especially for us cause it's coming way too close. Sometimes you can smell it. 
that's when we hide. Smells like a leg of meat that's been rotted for way too long and just won't go back into the dirt. Even the soil is rejecting him, I guess, refusing to let him be buried and die. It came. Too fast, we weren't ready. The smell came in the night. Maybe we would have been fine, but the Lillands were afraid, so we went to the shelter. Trev was slow. He saw it. Kept staring at it as it shambled by. It ignored us until he screamed when I was getting Liss in the mist down in the shelter. I went to get him, but it, w it was too fast. I saw him standing there, screaming. And then his head came down on him, pressed over him. He tried to run for the stairs, tried to get to us, but then in a blink, he was gone and it pulled away. His clothes fell into the cellar like he vanished out of them. I got into the shelter, slammed the hatch, and locked it. I think it knows we're here now. It'll try to get in, take us too. No telling how long we got. Plenty of food though. I was wrong. The food was rotten. Something got into it. Or I just didn't notice. We're eating what we can. There's food, but not enough. And that thing ain't leaving. It's trying to find ways in. Smelt the smell, coming from the life web plug in the wall. Something seeped through it and we kept away. It got all hard like a rock and don't smell no more. Maybe the power in the plug finally let it die. I went up to peek. Cellar is fine. Trev's clothes still on the stairs. Peeked outside. We're not going to make it. There were 10, 20, 30. Couldn't count. So many, all going in a circle around the house. Looking at it with all those faceless faces and the stink. Oh, the stink. Went back into the shelter and locked the door. I think I don't want to see my family rot away. I think faster is better. The miss, she agrees. We won't tell Liz. She'll be first. Then my wife, my love, and then me. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I gave the best life to my family possible. It was them holy ones what brought this. I'm going to pen this memory to my great pap. He was old and knew stories older than himself. Says those unclean they preach about, those unfertile zones they say stay out of, all cause of the most holy bringing the world together. Them things are the ultimate sin. Everything about us that was evil and impure, it's them. They don't know nothing but doing what they do. Don't even know why they do it, they just do it. Take us into them, and we're gone. I asked Pap what they were, and he lit a stick, took a puff, and he said, Don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody who will admit it. But if you see this symbol, if you see it, you run, boy. You run fast, you run far, and you hide. And you never go back where you saw it. That's all I know. I remember the symbol, what was on the rock he kept on his neck under his shirt. Next day, Pap was gone. Nowhere to be found. Dad weren't sad. Said he knew it happened one day. Pap went home. See you soon, Dad. Pap. Data expunged. Symbol matched symbol found on SCP-093 surface as one of the deeper engravings. Also matches symbols noticed on video feed of final test on SCP-093 duplicates. Violet test office ledger. The third test with SCP-093 resulted in the unfortunate loss of a security member, but also allowed us to recover a ledger with insight into the medical procedures carried out on the alternate Earth now termed E-093. Patient, Jennifer McZirka. Recovery tube 0011. Mixture, 35% tears, 30% nutrient, 10% HFT, 25% blessing. Summary. Jennifer McZirka is 20 cycles of age and during her 18th cycle was the victim of a Havride accident that resulted in brain damage and misalignment of her moral process. She is prone to violent outbursts and can only be calmed down by impure stimulation. Because of this, she actively seeks out strangers to mingle with and her parents have requested of the High Father that she be set to the tears to mend her mind and body. Patient accepted. During preparation for the tears, subject went into a rage and the attending hand went to recover a sedative. Jennifer tore her clothes off and screamed impure words at me, so I locked the door and instructed the hand to wait outside. I am half shameful to admit that I laid with Jennifer a total of seven times before putting her to the tears. It has been very long for me and her parents have abandoned her to our care, so care for her I will. 
Before setting her to the tears, I authorized a blessed probe of her body functions and found she is settled now with young, and tests confirm it shall be mine. I have mixed her bath to accommodate this, and she will soak in the tears until her body is ready to give life. Patient, none. Recovery tube, 001, 2. Mixture, none. Summary, none. Patient, Alberius Farafon. Recovery tube, 001, 3. Mixture, 80% tears, 20% nutrient. Summary. Alberius Farfan is a farmer from outside the city of Silver Feathers who claims to have lost family to the unclean. He confronted the High Father of the city and demanded compensation and retribution for the loss. The High Fathers denied the existence of unclean beyond the unfertile lands and refused compensation or retribution. Alberius struck a High Father and was arrested and sentenced to a cleansing of the soul. His mixture is primarily tears to seep into the soul and cleanse his heart and ease his pain. The law keepers state his family is indeed missing, so his sentence beyond the tears has been dropped in sympathy for their loss. I used the last of the HFT on Jennifer, or I would have used less tears in his bath. 80% is higher than I'm comfortable with, but the HFT is becoming hard to obtain. I may have to go through the dark. Patient. Recovery tube, 0021. Mixture, 75% nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary. A member of the Blessed Militia who was wounded in combat. Request is from the High Father, details withheld. Patient. Recovery tube, 0022. Mixture, 75% nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary. A member of the Blessed Militia who was wounded in combat. Request is from the High Father, details withheld. Patient. Recovery tube 0023. Mixture 75% nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary. A member of the Blessed Militia who is wounded in combat. Request is from the High Father, details withheld. Yellow test. PC printout, safe diary. <laughs> The fourth test into E-093 provided us with documentation assumed to be written by a technician in either a medical or government facility. Found in the safe is being considered for SCP classification primarily due to the composition of the ammunition found with it and the advanced firing mechanism attached to what should be a very base firearm. PC printout. I did not trust the overwatchers. I felt something was wrong years ago. Under my desk on floor 54 is a safe with a weapon in it. It's one of those used by the Blessed Militia. My brother sent it to me. He says they are also not what they claim. They have done things to our fellows even more vile than what the unclean would do. He tells me to be ready to fight. I can't. It's not me. I do not know violence. I'm too frail. You. Use it. Save yourself. Safe Diary. My name is Herval Tolowis. I am a hard systems watcher here. My job is to monitor the sinful who bathe in the Lord's tears and then make sure that they reach the prescribed dilution time. I've been doing this job for 23 years and now things are falling apart. I can no longer abide by the most holy. I must speak the truth. We are being told to evacuate. The containment tubes have been breached. An unclean has appeared in the place of rest and we are unable to destroy it. The live motion footage shows how it came to be, and this is what unsealed my heart and mind and tongue. I must speak. Should the Overwatchers see this, I will be silenced, so I must hide it. Thankfully, they are ignorant with the hardware, so I can hide it easily. The Overwatchers told us we should leave last to ensure the hardware contains the unclean. What that means is we should distract it and die in case it breaches the watching decks. It has shattered nearly all the tubes and absorbed the people in them. I have dispatched the eyes to the unclean and they have touched it, bringing me back a sample of it. The unclean are not sinners, they are not products of our disobedience. I suspect they are us. The eyes have dated the sample, it's older than myself, older than my elders. It is over 200 cycles in age. 200. The sirens are still sounding, but no signal has come for us to leave. 
I do not think this unclean is alone. I have seen how they can get into places, between places, between places. Is that where they've been all this time, between places? The makeup of the unclean is unstable. Molecules detach and reattach almost before my eyes, as if to move the entire thing reforms itself in space and time. Why does it not come up here? Too much effort? Or does it not sense me? They have no eyes, no mouth, no face. They cannot speak, cannot see, but they must be able to sense us. The smell, it's so strong. It comes from all directions. It's not a smell of the dead. It's a smell that comes from something that should be dead, but does not know how to die. The War of the Holy Union, I think that was where it may have started. We are united under the Most Holy, but what does he owe us? Nothing. We merely keep society running while those on high benefit. Is this not how it has always been? But now we are told we are pleasing the will of those above us in the clouds, those great beings who gave us the power to live and prosper, those who we have never laid eyes upon but are told we must revere. Lies, all of it, it must be. I'm using the eyes to create a fluid to oppose the makeup of the unclean sample. Perhaps they will cancel each other out. I will leave soon and store the rounds here. I cannot use the weapon. I am too weak a man for this. I will protect my family with my mind and not with my rage. We will be safe in the fields. I know where to go. I will go above now, to my family. I will leave the hardware running. I was told to turn it off, but this is where I defy them. It will run. This will watch. The eyes will see for however much time they have. Someone will read this, and someone will know. Take the gun, take the fluid, do not listen to the most holy. We did, and we are dead. Is a revolver style weapon with 12 bullet cylinders. The design of the gun has one cylinder on each side, raised slightly so they may flip into the gun itself and then rotate firing all rounds before flipping back and allowing it to be reloaded while the second is usable, allowing for a total of 24 shots before it runs empty. There is no firing pin on this gun, but instead, there is a pullback slide mechanism that must be used to prime the active cylinder. At the time of recovering, all 24 slots contained a syringe-style bullet with 32 needles on the end. On impact, it is assumed the force of the shot will press the liquid inside into the target. None have been tested. Of express interest is that these cylinders can hold standard 45 caliber ammunition which has been tested. The gun uses an ultra high power magnetic rail system to deliver the shot so the gunpowder in the bullet is never used. In consideration is a redesign of a round that would utilize the gunpowder mid-flight to add even higher velocity to the round or that would explode on impact for higher yield. Red Test – PC Printouts The final authorized test with SCP-093 resulted in the loss of a skilled service technician, but allowed us to recover very revealing documents that can only be assumed to not have been intended for public knowledge in any world. Curious among these is Agent <coughs> report, which appears to have been written by a Foundation employee several decades ago. While these paper printouts were the best material recovered, it seems that the system used to create them allowed for multiple forms of input, including typed and verbal speech to text. Some audio logs of the printouts below are available, but must be requested in advance, with fully written explanations as to why. This dual input system seems to explain the variances in the style between users as well, with assumptions made on the part of the software while performing conversions. Facility Fire Plan In the event of any emergency requiring the facility to be evacuated, all Clear 4 staff should report to Train Station 3 and use their vial to call the evacuation train. Only one vial is required to call the train and may contain any amount of tears. An empty vial will not call the train. Clear 2 and 1 staff should remain at their posts until either 10 minutes after the departure of Clear 4 persons or until authorized by Clear 4 staff. Clear 3 staff should utilize the protective garments at their stations and weapon lockers before proceeding to the designated crisis areas as dictated by Clear 4 staff. Reports Three unfertile zones have increased 25% in size in the last seven days. 
containment teams are not finding any presence of unclean in these zones, but they are visibly confirmed as expanding. Clear 5 level High Fathers have confirmed breaches in the Holy Chambers at each of these zones, all chambers found empty. It is believed that the unclean have breached containment on the Holy Chambers, dispatching additional guard to remaining chambers. Situation X549 Expansion of Zone 64TO has been confirmed. Unfertile Zone Containment Procedure in effect. Containment Staff Dispatched to Site. This is the 10th report in 30 days, upgrading to Situation Status. Reports from Clear 5 High Fathers have stopped at all affected. The City of His Word has been placed on full lockdown and all travel denied in or out. Other cities are now in alert mode, and combat teams are being dispatched to city perimeters. Situation X-550 The great land of Hufusia has fallen per satellite images. Entire landmass considered tainted. Outbreak of sin reported in Lavina, and that landmass has requested assistance from the Holy Union. Assistance denied due to our own outbreak and mass reportings of unclean. Clear 10 staff have issued the order to evacuate via the gateway and for all Holy Union authorized persons to proceed to the nearest sky platform for evacuation to Star I Eden to continue monitoring status. Gateway keys are being ejected to prevent spread from this center to other space-time vectors. Resurrecting staff are being awakened to monitor and continue reports here as we evacuate. May his blessings forgive our greatest sin. Evacuation Log Evacuation in progress. Shuttle 1 away. Shuttle 2 away. Shuttle 3, error, 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 error. Release us, release us, release us. Why, 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 why? Shuttle 3, error. Launch aborted. Proceed to Shuttle 4. Shuttle 4 reporting delayed launch. Overloaded. Triage protocols engaged. Shuttle 4 reports passenger limit obtained, preparing to launch Y, 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 release us, Y, release us, Y us, what did we do, Y, Y, system detecting electrostatic activity, compensating, compensating, comp, 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 comp. 10101101010101010101010111 Why were we hurt? What did we do? Why were we hurt? What did we do? System shut down. System restore. Purge of contaminated data in progress. Why us? Why us? Why us? Why us? Why us? Why listen? Record 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 4, 3, 9, 2. Password. Forgive us. Five 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 four 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 three three two 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 one 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 why 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 system purge 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 bull WTF is this place lol okay so like there are people typing stuff here so I'm gonna type two lol so like, I found this rock in the pond by the house, and it was all like glowy and stuff when I picked it up. So I'm like, oh wow, pretty. And when I picked it up, the pond, you couldn't see the bottom, it was this weird room with a glowy rock thing, hello, I don't know. So like, I guess I fell into it, oops, and now I'm here, and not there. And really, I'm kinda scared, but this place is like a movie set. So it's cool, lol, there's some guy I can hear talking, he keeps asking me to come downstairs, but I don't see no door. He keeps screaming for help too, cause I told him to eat me, haha, and he won't shut up, I guess I could try going back into that room, but it's so creepy in there, I'm sort of scared to laugh. Oh, so hey, I found a door, it's like in the floor instead of on a wall, so like, I'm gonna go tell that guy yelling to shut it up so I can go home, be back later. Agent <coughs> Report. My name is <coughs> and I'm an agent at the Foundation. The year in my world is 1972. I assume it's the same in this world, but from what I've seen due to SCP-093, life on this world ended in approximately 1954. I've used SCP-093 to visit a number of locales, starting and ending here in this center. I've seen the landscapes where no grass will grow. I've run from the unclean as they pursue anything they sense. I have no understanding of how they hunt, but I have learned what they are. Approximately 350 years ago or so, this world experienced a technological boom ours did not. The source of this seems to have been the arrival of He a godlike being of unknown origin. 
He declared the world unclean and full of sin, and the only way to purge itself of this sin was to purge the sinners. A war. Whoever was left alive was clean. Amazing advances in science were bestowed to all cultures for a period of 10 years to prepare them for this war, and during that time, he disappeared. The war happened anyway. The instigator? The Holy Union of Land. Apparently, the landmass that for us would become the United States. Records are sketchy, and books that detail anything about this time period are forbidden in the world. I located a cache of recorded history by following a series of corrupted computer communications. It seems the primary weapons used in this war for his love was in fact, people. Exposed to something called His Holy Tears, a liquid compound I have seen in use even today in abandoned medical facilities. His holy tears purge the sin from the unclean and make them love him. At least, that's what the label states. The records I recovered are very unclear about how this war was waged except to state his holy chosen walked the lands of the sinful and took their sin unto themselves. Those who cried for his salvation received it and are now our children. Those who denied his love were purified in his radiance. But something apparently happened no one knew how to deal with. The unclean. The large creatures that are half a man and devour whatever they touch that lives and breathes. I actually found a scientific report written by someone who stumbled here with an SCP-093 copy. These creatures are the result of exposure to a very pure form of his tears, resulting in a genetic apocalypse occurring within the exposed. There are terms in here, something about quantum restructuring. I don't understand any of this, but it means they were once humans like everyone else that couldn't be controlled, but they could be contained. They seemed to be attracted to his tears, and a central point was established in various regions where a person with the purest form of his tears stays, keeping the unclean in that area known as an unfertile land. Something went wrong with that too. Not sure what, but everything fell apart. The power structure, the culture, the people, all of it fell to ruins, and now those things shamble around the land as its new owners, with no purpose or direction. You can stand next to one if you can stand the stink, and they just slip right past you. If you catch their attention though, that's it. They move like lightning if they need to, and like a snail unless they have a reason to speed up. Sometimes, I think they chase just to do it. Others, they move to kill. I think someone is in this facility. Or someones. I keep hearing voices and requests coming from areas under the floor. I want to leave this before I explore the facility any further. I've sent SCP-093 back through the entry mirror to seal the gate. These things can't be let into our world, nor should we have anything to do with this one. We're simply not smart enough to understand it all, I feel. I don't think the unclean can die. They're immortal, but they don't want to be. They just want to die. They're in my head, I think. I didn't notice it until just now, but equipment in this room is starting to react to me. Words on the screen, begging for help. I, I remember touching the tears, smelling it, tasting it, just a touch. Not eating it, just touching to it, tasting for acidity. <laughs> we have pretty stupid investigative procedure, I think. The High Fathers are alive. They have technology we only imagine in our comics given by him. Some of the records on the machine indicate space travel, but they didn't go far. Just far enough to watch the world fall apart and wait to come back and take it. But if they're up there, who is in this building with me? I've seen the faces of the people, the unclean. They show up on the pictures cast by the machine in the room with me, watching me. I think they're everywhere on this world, only seen by machines now. They don't look sad or happy, just curious. They want to know why. Why them? Why did it all happen? I don't know. I just don't know. They showed me things when I touched them, and it's not quite like the records say. The unclean remember it all. Every person they touch becomes part of them, safe inside them, but dead to us. Every mind, every feeling, every terror, 
It's eternal to them. I kind of want to join them, but too much to do. They want me to find him, kill him. There was no war. It was him, 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 it, it. It came from between the folds of time and space and worlds and light and dark. Something that is but should not be slipped in and called out to them as their god and they believed it and they tasted it and touched it and laid with it and became its property and did its will and it is still here. The SCP-093 it brought with it, pulled forcefully with it, built it. I don't know, they don't know, but it belongs to him. It lets him move between places, between worlds, so I broke it. I threw pieces of it away and threw holes so those doors are closed just like ours is closed and I can't go home so what else can I do? It calls out through the rock, somehow. It knows where they are but can't touch them. But if you hide the rock, he can't call out and he's stuck too. I got you. I got you, you son of a I got you, bang bang! I touched him with my fist and my gun and he fell down. But he'll get back up soon. Soon. I'm sorry, I did all I could. Just let me sleep now. Please. Let me sleep.